Good afternoon and welcome to my talk. My name is Johannes Breuer. I'm working at Dynatrace in the role of a technology strategist. And guess what? The technology I'm working on is, of course, Cloud Foundry. Even though I'm relatively new in this area, I already got really good insights into monitoring a Cloud Foundry infrastructure. And today I want to share my knowledge, especially in order to make your application, applications running smoothly. To get this talk started, I actually flipped the title and I put it application complexity and application health in the foreground, but just for now. And based on that, I will then do a deep dive until we reach a certain level where we can talk about cluster health. When we consider, when we um, take a look at the complexity of, applica of applications, then I like to point out this statement that says that on average a single transaction uses 82 different technology. 82? Well, this number sounds pretty intense, but when we take a closer look on the different, uh, on the journey a transaction has, then I'm pretty sure that we can come up with a justification that says that 82 is a valid number. Just to uh, give you an example, here on the left side we have the end user who is using a mobile device, a notebook, with an operating system on it and with a browser on it and there it's entering the, the uh, URL of the application. This, this URL is then um, yeah, routed to a um, network interface where it hits the public network. Then there are switches, Wi-Fi transmitters, LTE transmitters and we also reach at some point a satellite where the transaction goes on, but I want to stop here because it now becomes a little bit talk too complex. But I just assume that the transaction hits the data center at a certain point, and this data center can be either hosted on our, our infrastructure or on the infrastructure of a public vendor. Along this journey from the end user to a data center, we have to rely on certain technologies. For example, we cannot control the Wi-Fi or the wireless network, but what we can control is what's going on in our data center. And to break down the monitoring stack into its different, into its, uh, different abstraction levels, I will show you here the monitoring stack. It shows you that Application health is on top of this stack. It is the highest abstraction level because it's actually facing the end user. Then underneath application health, we can see microservice health. In other words, this is the part where our microservices live, and there we want to understand how they behave. Each microservice is then running in a container. This is the next level. It's the, the, con the level of processes. And all processes are hosted somewhere on a virtual machine, and this is the, the level of the cluster. And to a certain point, we also get or should be aware of what's going on within our data center, and this is the lowest abstraction level here on the bottom. I just want to briefly mention a few points to each of these layers. On the top, we have the application again. At this part, we are interested in how is the response time of our application. Is the client somewhere facing a 400 or a 500 error? And how is the, uh, the application working? From a more advanced perspective, we also want to understand which, what's the distribution of the browsers using the application and from where is the person navigating to the application, in other words, we want to get a breakdown of the geolocation in order to pinpoint a certain problem to a region or area. All in all, understanding the application health is strongly related to user monitoring behavior. When it comes to the microservice level, here we have key metrics like the CPU usage, the throughput, the failure rate, and um, the response time of each service. But 
it's also important to understand how the services interact with each other in order to understand where are bottlenecks or where should I start to scale up or scale down. And this is here shown by the picture on the bottom where we can see an end-to-end -end communication that's going on within our microservice environment. When we reach the container level, here we are interested in the CPU memory usage and the I.O. operations on the disk. And last but not least, we have now reached the level of cluster, and we can now talk about cluster health itself. And here we should be taken into consideration how our hosts are behaving, how the hosts are behaving that are hosting our application. But in context of a Cloud Foundry infrastructure, we should also take a look at the components that keep the Cloud Foundry foundation up and running. And because there are a lot of hosts out there that are necessary for Cloud Foundry in order to create the containers, to distribute load, to do the routing, and so on. This now brings me back to my previous slide where I say that application health builds on cluster health, but what's actually a cluster in context of Cloud Foundry? To answer this question, I borrowed this architectural overview from a Cloud Foundry infrastructure. It's uh, available on the Cloud Foundry uh, documentation. And this diagram shows you each the components and how they interact with each other. Here you can see, for example, the Diego cell, then the Diego brand, the Diego database, and also the, the cloud controller. I don't have an, enough time to talk about all of them, but I want to show you two scenarios in order to get or to give you an understanding how the parts can interact with each other. The first scenario is from the viewpoint of a developer. Let's assume we have a person who wants to see if push an application. Then the first entry point is the cloud controller. The cloud controller receives the artifact and then moves it over to the cloud controller bridge. This is the place where the, where the build bags drop, drop in and where the droplet is generated. After that, the droplet is registered at the bulletin board system and it's also prepared for rolling it out to a Diego cell. But before rolling it out to a Diego cell, the BBS um, sends an auction request to the auctioneer. And after the auctioneer accepts this request, it then builds a garden container and let this container run on a Diego cell. Finally, uh, Diego also registers the application on the Go router in order to make it publicly available and to allow traffic coming, coming in. And this brings me to the second scenario, the scenario from an end user. Let's assume we have a person who wants to visit our application, then the person enters the URL. This URL comes to the Go router, and from this point, the Go router uh, forwards the traffic to the application. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And now we have these two scenarios, the one from a developer and an end user, and based on that we can uh, conclude that the auctioneer and the Go router are very important components when it comes to deploying an app and to keeping the communication of, cloud, of a Cloud Foundry infrastructure up and running. Since the auctioneer is such a mission-critical component, I have here summarized the main tasks of an auctioneer. First, it holds an auction for each task and each application. Then, the auctioneer is responsible for distributing work uh, using the auction algorithm. And for this auction al algorithm, it considers, for example, uh, in which availability zone the cluster is running, or how many resources are available, or how many instances of each application should be allocated. And last but not least, the auctioneer also maintains a log 
in order to ensure that just one auctioneer can handle an auction at a time. And we can now conclude that the auctioneer, in case the auctioneer fails, then we are not possible to deploy an app to a Diego cell. In order to characterize an auctioneer, uh, Pivotal has recommended uh, three KPIs. The first one you can see here on the left top corner is the average fetch duration. This is the time it takes the auctioneer to get the status from or the state from a Diego cell. He needs the state because the algorithm, the auction algorithm, must decide where is place available and where should I put the next application to. And then we can see two other KPIs that just tell us how many apps could not be successfully deployed and how many apps were successfully deployed on a Diego cell. Then the go router again, he has just one simple task. The task is that he has to keep the communication to a Cloud Foundry and within Cloud Foundry up and running. And when a go router goes down, then the entire communication comes to a still stand. For characterizing a go router, Pmodel has also recommended four KPIs. The first one is the total number of requests. This number is telling us how many requests are currently processed by the go router. Then we have the average response time that tells us how responsive the go router is. This uh, KPI is depending on the application behind and also depending on the workload that is currently uh, facing the end uh, the go router. And then we have two additional KPIs. Uh, the first one is the, the number of 502 errors and the number of all the other 500 errors. In order to monitor a Cloud Foundry environment, we at Dynatrace follow the approach of a full stack monitoring um, approach. And this gives us full visibility within one Cloud Foundry cluster. And what I exactly mean with that, uh, I will now explain to you. The easiest way to monitor an application in your Cloud Foundry infrastructure is uh, by using the, the application monitoring approach. And this is the approach where you put the monitoring agents side by side your application and within one container. And then you have the ability to get all the data and to monitor the application. And this allows you to get visibility on the process, the microservice, and on the application level. But you cannot get data from the host level. And this is the reason why we follow um, full stack monitoring approach because this approach instruments all hosts that are running in a Cloud Foundry foundation and this then gives you full, full visibility into each layer I just mentioned before. To now implement this full stack monitoring approach we at Dynatrace are using the power of Bosch. I'm pretty sure you are familiar with Bosch but to bring everybody on the same page, let me explain it to you based on this, um, on this <coughs> picture. Here we can see that Bosch sits in between the infrastructure and the runtime platform, and Bosch is taking over the responsibilities to, managing, to manage all VMs that are required for the Cloud Foundry platform. You can configure Bosch using the, the runtime configuration, and Everything is, is written in YAML. I'm sorry for that, but um, you have to be a friend of YAML when you're using Bosch. Then to extend a Bosch or the, the infrastructure automation layer, um, Bosch provides the concepts of Bosch add-ons. A Bosch add-on is also um, configured using its own runtime configuration and it implements the same concepts like Bosch itself. You can specify a stem cell, a release or job within a Bosch add-on. And we develop the Bosch add-on in order to roll out our monitoring agent on each host. 
when you want to have a look at this Bosch add-on, feel free to check out our GitHub repo and to visit Bosch.io because they are listed as publicly available Bosch add-on. I have not talked a lot how to monitor um, a Cloud Foundry environment and to give you more hands-on hands experience, I want to show you now a demo. I prepared the Sockshop app um, for this demo. It's monitored using a full stack approach and it's running on Pivotal Cloud Foundry. And I now simply switch over to the application to show you that's working. This is the, the home screen. Then you have the chance to switch over to a catalog. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't see it. Then you have the chance to switch over to a catalog, and here you can order a pair of socks in case you are logged in. We simply log in with a user. Okay, let's, uh, let's add this to the card. Uh, it's a normal application, but I want you to take care of uh, this button on the right side, on the right top corner because something will happen in a few minutes. Now to see what's going on in the cluster, I switch over to Dynatrace for a second. Uh, in case you have never been in touch with Dynatrace, this is the, the first entry point because here you can see all the dashboards. I have prepared one dashboard. It, this one is called Cloud Foundry Infrastructure. And here we can see all the hosts that are currently running in our Cloud Foundry Foundation. Then you can see here the Diego cells that are um, that are hosting my my um, sock shop app. And here on the right side, you can see the go router KPIs I just mentioned before, like for example the latency and the current number of requests that are coming in. And in order to stress the go router now, I have prepared um, uh, a load test, which I started now. And this load test now lets a lot of traffic, or pulls a lot of traffic to the go router. And I simply go, go back to the Sock Shop app. And I click again on the catalog. And I click again. OK, could you see it? What's now happening is that the button in the right top corner disappeared. Why did it disappear? That's a kind of weird situation. But the reason is, that the Go router is that much overloaded with, with requests I'm currently sending to the Go router that he cannot not respond correctly, and he immediately returned a 500 error. And this now is not the problem is now not based on the application itself; it's based on the underlying infrastructure. And we can see this in Dynatrace by switching back to the dashboard. Oh, here you can see that a tons of uh, requests are now coming in. No, actually not that much. Let's refresh the website. Oh, we simply go over to the Go router. Here you can see an increase. And in a couple of minutes or seconds, there we should see a 500 error. And this is because the front end could not uh, load the data from the, from the card service, which was responsible for the button on the top right corner. i just give it a try. Here it is. 
Here we can see that the go router immediately returned a 500 error because it's that much overloaded. I think that you can assume when we now scale up the go router application to uh, the go router instance to two instances, then the latency will go back to a normal value because the load is distributed to the go router to to both instances. And now I'm close to reach the end of my talk, but before before I end my talk, I just want to point out what the next generation of monitoring could look like, because the next generation of monitoring is not just focused on identifying a problem and notifying someone that there is something going wrong. I think and we see in the market that there is the, that the next generation of monitoring should also consider self-healing and auto-remediation actions in order to drive uh, autonomous cloud concepts because without auto remediation actions in place um, all occurring problems would be notified or escalated to a person on call who is then taking over responsibility of that but there are certain problem patterns that have common recomm recommend auto recommendation actions and why should, should we not uh, ask a machine for fixing the problem, similar like a person would do. I have here prepared, yeah, a showcase where I have an example or a problem that occurs at 2 a.m. in the morning. Normally we would escalate this problem to a person on call, but instead of doing that we just run a couple of auto remediation actions. The first one could be for example to check the CPU usage and in case it's exhausted we add an additional instance. Then we could also um, check how the garbage collection is working in case it's, there is a bottleneck we add more memory. And a third remediation action could be to restart a service in case it hangs. And at a certain point we still have to check if we could mitigate the problem in case we could not. We then do the final re um, auto remediation action that would be a restart of the host. And in case this di did not help us, then we have to escalate the problem to a person who takes over responsibility. To summarize my talk and uh, also this slide I just want to point out that monitoring and making uh, cluster health available to operators is important to keep everything up and running and we should also think about automating tasks in order to drive autonomous cloud ideas and to make, make us yeah, uh, fit for dealing with multi-cloud or hybrid, hybrid cloud solutions with that will come and that will increase complexity to a certain level. Now I'm at the end. Thank you very much for listening. I'm happy for answers. Now or I'm still at the, working at the booth, simply stop by and ask me for, for further details or for other questions. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, then thanks.